Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there Hunters and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. So today I'm going to do an update for the bow guide since the old ones are kind of scattered and pretty much a year old at this point. Now not a whole lot has changed from the base game to Iceborne but we do have some new additions. So I'm going to try to make this as complete as possible so of course we're going to start with some basics so let's just get into this. Starting with the controls, bow is pretty simple as are all ranged weapons. The most important part is to just actually aim. So right trigger or where do we have it bound to on PC, I have it set to right click so I can aim down sights like an FPS. So while aiming you can do a few things so let's just run through them. First is your left click or left trigger or whatever you have it set up to is to do normal shots. We also call them rapids if you play the older games. You can keep shooting these and they will build up a charge each time and then reset back to 1 after 3 shots or 4 if you have the mighty bow skill. Each charge gives you another arrow, increases the motion value and the elemental modifier. Do note that 4 is still capped at 3 arrows but it does have higher raw elemental and status modifiers. These are your bread and butter shots and you mainly want to use them to increase your charge level before you do your combo enders. Rapids do have critical distance, so you can't just point blank them without ballistics, but they still do most of their damage. It's a 0.8 modifier if you hit within the crit distance. The other arrows you can shoot are spreads, also known as power shots. These arrows are stronger but fan out their damage, so they're best utilized up close, kind of like point blank range. They default to circle, I have mine mapped on my keyboard as E. Now the first rank of spreads is unique and it's called quick shot. It's special because for a level 1 charge it's actually very strong since it starts with 3 arrows. Also using this does not cost any stamina like using a rapid and in fact lets you regen stamina while you're using it. So it's really amazing to start your combos with this so you can just regen a little bit more stamina than you otherwise would be able to. Remember stamina management is huge for bow. Using spreads after any shot is what's called a power shot. This fires 3 arrows at rank 2, 5 at rank 3, and 6 at rank 4 if you have the mighty bow decoration at least. These have the same raw values as rapids but have slightly higher elemental modifiers and obviously deal way more damage since there's double the amount of arrows. However you do have to be very close to focus your damage on a single part. Now after you power shot you can also click or hold again to do an arc shot. If you just click it it'll default to a set space in front of you and if you hold it you can move the marker around and kind of select a spot. Arc shots launch a volley of rocks or coconuts whatever you want to call them into the air and they rain down on the monster. These don't do a whole lot of damage but they do cause a ton of KO. A charge 4 arc shot does 10 KO per coconut and hits up to 15 times so 150 KO potentially. Typically two arc shots will put down any monster on its first KO. However do not spam this move at all because outside of the first KO it becomes just too much of a nuisance to try to get that many coconuts on a monster to get the second KO. I mean maybe if it's like an especially KO weak monster like Lunastra go for it but just do more damage. Now clicking circle and triangle or on PC E and R is Dragon Pierce. Pretend that doesn't exist. Going into the claw first, which is a hassle on its own, by aiming and then clicking L3 or tab for me on PC, then clicking E and R at the same time will do what's called 1000 dragons. This attack uses your slinger ammo and does a huge burst of damage. The damage formula for this isn't very well known, however it does do a lot of damage, especially when paired with pierce pods. However the downside is that it takes a long time to do and recover from, so generally it's not worth using in a fight, especially if you have to keep sheathing to pick up slinger ammo. However, it does have its uses. The burst damage is great for causing staggers on monsters that are just getting up so you can stop a limp or you can cause a clagger or get a topple. And that's pretty much the only time you'll ever want to use it because outside of that, just dash dancing is faster and we'll get into that in a second. Okay, so the last thing Bo can do is probably the most important thing, which is sliding. While aiming, you can dodge to slide in the direction that you're dodging. Typically, this is just the four cardinal directions, but there are some exploits to get some funky directional sliding and they're kind of hard to pull off and don't grant much of a benefit for doing, but you know, you can still do it. So sliding. It will automatically increase your current charge level by one and it also keeps your charge level maxed. So if you're holding an arrow at charge four and you shoot it, you can slide afterwards and you'll still be at charge four, allowing you to keep on your optimal damage without having to reset your charge counter. That being said, you can't dash and shoot forever because it takes stamina to do both these things. This is where your stamina management becomes vital for using bow. It's also really easy to forget your charge level in the middle of a fight and when you're dashing around a whole lot, so just try to keep up with it. Now sliding into triangle or R on my PC setup causes you to do a lunge attack that builds up mount damage. Don't do this, ever. 
you know, forget I even said it. Just pretend it doesn't exist along with Dragon Pierce. Get that shit out of here. Also, triangle or R for me loads coatings, bow ammo, yeah. Now, Bo's claw attack is actually pretty good for a light weapon because Bo is really strong and it does get frequent claggers, allowing you to keep up your tender eyes pretty easily with it. So you should always be utilizing the claw attack. Now, Bo is also fast enough that once you get that clagger and you see the monster and you'll fall back and drool, you should be able to get it in three hits before the end of that animation. So once you see it, you can usually dash in to do two rapids and a power shot, then swap the claw and grab hold to do your tenderized attack. It's a great way to get a bunch of free damage on a monster. Okay, so with all the basics out of the way, let's get into the rotations really fast. I will assume that you have a Mighty Bow decoration because it is very much mandatory to play Bow properly, which sucks, but hey, I don't make the rules, I just call you a scrub for not following them. Okay, so we have previously gone over Bow rotations in another video, and pretty much they're the same, nothing really changed so much for Iceborne, other than one small quirk. Dash Dancing is very strong in Iceborne. That's what most of your attacks will be, because Stamina Surge is so readily available, we have much better Stamina Regeneration than we did in base game. Because of this, getting to that dash dancing stage is very important. So what a lot of people have started to do is a new combo with quick shot, then slide into rapid, and then go immediately into power. And then from there you just go dash dancing. So if you're unfamiliar with dash dancing, it's basically as it sounds. After your power shot, you can slide into another rapid and then power shot again, which will do another level 4 charge for both, and then you slide and keep doing it and you just keep that going and you're pretty much only doing the most powerful attacks in your roster constantly, which is great for coding management, it's great for damage, it's just great all around. They use this to start because quick shot is great for stamina regeneration, and then you can slide into charge 2 without using a coat and shooting a low level rapid. Then you go into rapid 3, which has 3 arrows, and then you can go right into power 4, which is your most strongest attack and then dash dancing from there. Now it's rather efficient. Of course you don't always have the opportunity to do this, and most bow play is actually just reacting to the situation. If you're in multiplayer, then there will be a lot of times you don't have the monster's head or it's not close to you, so you should always be spending your time closing the gap or getting back to the face. In solo, you don't really have this issue, especially when you don't have a cat around, so using this rotation is actually not all that difficult. But just because this rotation is optimal doesn't mean it's the only thing you can or should do. The old combos, like the quick shot into three rapids and then power shot, cost significantly less stamina to use if you're trying to keep up your damage while also waiting for a good opening to regen. Likewise, the quick shot rapid power rapid power cycle of alternating your shots is easier on the stamina management than dash dancing and it's still a huge amount of DPS to be putting out there. And the last thing you want to do is get caught with no stamina when you need to dodge. So what I'm getting at is that while we have few optimal rotations for damage, it's really up to you to assess the situation and manage your coatings, time, charge levels, stamina, and distance. There's no flow chart of, okay, just do this, other than when a monster's toppled, then you pretty much just dash dance. But playing bow optimally, or even just well, is going to come down to experience. Hell, watch any of the bow runners, Bay, Kuroha, Tatsi, Sybil, maybe myself, uh, we all play the bow very differently. As long as you aren't just spamming rapids and coconuts, you should be fine. Just watch your stamina, don't use dragon pierce, and 1000 dragons unless you know what you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to be posting some information on the screen here just a bit as a reference guide for some tools. Things like power coatings and close range coatings and stamina skills and how much they provide and some other little stats like that. You can go ahead and use this as a reference if you need. And honestly, I really wish I could give you a proper bow tutorial, I really do, but gunning in general is not complicated. You aim and shoot. Everything else is on you. You need to know the monster, your weapon, your reach, your items, everything. Especially when you get one hit KO by most monsters, you just can't get hit. Just shoot the face, and I don't think there's a single monster where that isn't entirely true, except Zenogr, where you can shoot the feet, but head is still preferred. So on the control side, it's all up to you. The next best thing I can do is explain the current meta for bow sets, which honestly hasn't changed ever. I will show some sets and Imgur album links and stuff in the description, but there are so many ways to make the similar or the same sets. Just use what you can and use what you have available just to build your own set. I'll put a link in the Honey Hunter set builder down below, which will let you filter down your decorations and make sets with what you have. Alright, so first is that bows are elemental weapons, so you need to make a bow for every element. Stop being lazy and asking for one general purpose bow set. Seriously, stop it. 
While you can use a raw based bow with the Safi Jiva bows against monsters with, you know, hot garbage elemental weak zones such as Zenogre and Stygian, for reference, they're only weak to element in their charge state, and the entire point of those fights is to prevent them from going into the charge state, so element doesn't really help you a whole lot there. So like, Blast Bow on Raw is pretty much the go-to for those. But outside of those, Elemental. Elemental is the most important thing, so you always want to augment for all the elemental you can first, always get the elemental awakening on Safi Bows, always get the elemental 6 skill, get all the element. If made that point clear yet? Element. Okay, so since you know that, you can get more element by using the critical element and Safi Jiva bonuses. The critical element modifier for bow is 1.35 times, and the true crit multiplier is 1.55 times. These are huge boosts in damage. Now, Safi Jiva armor adds a 150 flat amount to your base value, which is also very strong, but not quite as strong as true critical element. However, if you're not going super tryhard, you can definitely run Safi Jiva armor instead of critical element since it doesn't matter if you crit or not. If the part's tenderized or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's way more casual friendly. It's also not that much weaker. It's like 4 to 8 damage and arrow tops. It's not huge. And if you're wondering about the Namiel set bonus, don't bother. The issue with the Elemental Acceleration is that it adds flat elemental, but unlike Safi Jiva, it doesn't actually add to your base value, which is what extends your elemental cap in general, so Namiel and the Elemental Decoration skills don't stack with each other. It's quite a shame to be honest. So your elemental options are basically True Crit Element or Safi Jiva. And yes, you can technically run an in-between with Crit Element plus 3 pieces of Safi, but there's like no point to that at all. So when you're building your bow sets, you absolutely must have Mighty Bow, or Bow Charge Plus, whatever they call it. From there, get your element together. Elemental Skill 6 to match your bow, True Critical Element, which means 4 pieces Silver Lose or 5 pieces Safi Jiva for that flat bonus, and that's most of your set. That's it. So if you went with the true critical element setup, you're definitely going to want weakness exploit and critical eye. Max out your crit should be your next priority once you get your elemental skills in. Obviously that will give you the most elemental damage you can possibly do. From there, it's all up to you. Now I'm going to put a list of skills that you can use on bow. Pick whatever you want unless you're going to go for like some crazy speedrun strat you don't have to be like the super glass cannon meta set. Just make something comfy, go crazy, it doesn't matter, you're not going to lose a whole lot of damage. Things like Critical Boost is nice, but you know, it only affects your raw portion of your damage. Constitution is nice to have one point of because your stamina reduction caps at 50%, and you can get most of that with drinking a dash juice and eating for Feline Black Belt. It's also nice because you can have level 4 decorations with like Con Crit Boost or Con Weakness Exploit. Stamina Surge is another great stamina management skill, and it's more of a quality of life skill than anything, but it also comes with some nice level 4 decos like Stam Surge Con or Stam Surge Expert. I always try to get at least one rank of con and stam search on my sets though. Now the ammo skills are also nice, but again, it's only for raw damage. Now you should basically be done with most of your sets by now. Both sets are pretty easy once you know what you're looking for. Now I'll show you some sample sets, but for the most part we're going to run 4 pieces silver loss and garuga boots, or you can do 5 piece safi. They basically build themselves. For the bows themselves, however, I'll break them up into two categories, pre and post safi, because post safi, all the bows are safi bows. So pre Safi, we'll be using Glavinus for Fire, Legiana for Ice, Laguna for Water, Tobikadachi for Thunder, and Valhazak for Dragon. Now we do have some other bows that we can use that are intermittently good and stuff, but at the same time that's only going to be the case for like another month when Safi Jiva hits PC, so I wouldn't worry about upgrading them and using them for now, it doesn't really matter. Also I do typically do a video with every update to let people know of any meta changes, um, but that's pretty much it for bow. There's not a whole lot to it to be honest, it's just experience. If we're going to take away anything from this video though, I'd like it to be three things. First, make bows for all your elements. Stop trying to get around that. Two, Dragon Pierce doesn't exist. Three, just learn your monsters. Learn the matchups, come on. I wish I could do more, I really can't stress that enough, but that's all there is to bow. So thank you all for watching and good luck out there hunters and whatever you may be hunting.